familiar, yet full of surprises. Dolphins paying a visit, and bear islands. Polar ice meets a mini Sahara. All of this is the Baltic Sea. Between Denmark and the Baltics, sandy coasts attract mass tourism, as well as individual travelers and unusual beachcombers. The first episode takes us from Denmark's northern tip, via the Das Peninsula and the Curonian Spit, to the endless beaches of Latvia. Tranquil, the Baltic Sea. For many, it doesn't deserve the title, Sea. But here too, the wind can cause high waves. The Baltic is different to other seas. An inland sea with salt water in the west and fresh water in the northeast. It is the youngest ocean in the world, evolved after the last ice age. To this day, wind and waves shape the shores. Transport sand, excoriated from the cliffs of the Ice Age. High dunes grow. And long sandy beaches that, via prevailing currents, especially characterize the west and southern regions of the Baltic. Like at Denmark's northernmost point near Skagen. There, a very special sandbank edges its way into the sea. This is the divide between Skagerrak and Kattegat, where the North Sea meets the Baltic. Seals come here to relax, because tourists are also attracted to the sandbank between the seas, they prefer to give birth somewhere else. Due to the North Sea connection, the water here has a salt content of some 2%, it is clear, and full of kelp forests. In the middle of the Kattegat between Denmark and Sweden is the island of Anholt. Since 1560, a lighthouse guides ships on their way. Morten Abutström is a ranger on Anholt, the only place in Denmark from where one can observe seals from land. Even though it is only with binoculars. Centuries of being hunted has made the seals shy. This is why they now meet on a sandbank on the east side of the island. Mid-June, the mothers give birth to one pup respectively, each weighing in at around 10 kilograms. Mothers suckle their young for five weeks. The milk has a fat content of some 45% more than 10 times that of cow's milk, a real-life energy drink. The birds are in for a treat. The placenta is a feast. Just ask any seagull. With more than a 1,000 animals, the seal colony on Anholt is the largest in the Baltics. In order to produce sufficient milk, 
The mother has to keep leaving her young and go hunting in the sea for fish. The seal babies spent most of their time together in a makeshift kindergarten. But every three to four hours, their enormous appetite for fresh milk awakes. Then they call for their mother. Here they risk being caught in the crossfire. On her return, the mother too searches for her offspring. She recognizes him by his smell and his voice, amongst roughly 500 other babies on Anmont. The other mothers send the little one packing, as they will only suckle their own baby. which means continuing the search and repeated calls to the mother. At last, she has recognized the familiar voice. greets her baby before she gives him anything to eat. While one can only observe the family life of the timid seals on Anholt from a distance, beachcombers run the risk of stumbling over the nurseries of other animals. The chicks of the common ringed plover just duck their heads to the ground, fully trusting that they are then invisible to others. So as not to betray the chick's location, the parents land a short distance away before they quietly approach to warm the chicks beneath their wing feathers. Little terns breed in just a few areas along the Baltic Sea. The chicks are rarely larger than a matchbox, the parents lighter than half a bar of chocolate. As pretty as they may be, once they sit in a debris trough, the little terns are masterfully camouflaged. As a rule, they hatch two to three eggs, and this mostly undisturbed as 90% of the island of Anhalt is under nature conservation. Unlike the North Sea, tides are virtually non-existent in the Baltic. This is why the beaches are not flooded twice a day. For the young seals, this means a continually dry nursery. Despite the fact that they can swim from the day they were born. The mothers eventually lure the little ones into the sea. And even if some of them spend their time on the backs of their mothers, the young animals must soon be independent. Five weeks after their birth, and the young already weigh almost 30 kilograms. They will need the fat reserves too, then when the mother leaves them, there is nothing they can do other than to catch fish themselves. And this doesn't happen right away. Seals can spend up to half an hour underwater, but their dives rarely last more than five or six minutes.
Up to eight centimeters of fat protect the seal against cooling. Once their coat has become wet, it no longer isolates them very well. Seals live almost only in the Western Baltic Sea, a few of them off southern Sweden. Epidemics such as distemper have caused the deaths of thousands of the animals. Thanks to strict protection rules, their stocks have been replenished. Now, once again, some 16,000 seals inhabit the sandbanks. South of the Kattegat, straits, islands and bays limit the exchange with the North Sea. The water here contains less salt, and this is where the inland sea of the Baltic actually begins. The hills are moraines, deposits from glaciers of the Ice Age. Cliffs, like those on the island of Foon, are derogations of similar hills. They're not made of sand, but clay, which is much firmer. A perfect foundation for sand martins. Each spring, Europe's smallest species of tern returns from their African winter quarters. The birds check whether the old holes are still nestworthy. And they have to find a new partner as the San Martin's breeding community lasts but one summer. Hollowed out side by side in the steep face, the burrows are inaccessible for nest robbers. The armlong ducts rise toward the end to prevent rain from entering them. The nesting recess at the end of the burrow must now be made just a little cosier. The martins use seaweed and sometimes a few feathers with which to upholster the nest before they begin to lay five or six eggs there. In better years, they even breed a second time in the loamy cliffs of the Pleistocene. They make good pasture land and cropland. Additionally, the Danish island worlds offer ideal breeding and mating regions for waterfowl, such as shell ducks and red shanks. In the shallow shore areas, the male scuttles, thereby courting the female. while the common ring plovers argue over the best territory. The red shank has been successful in his endeavors. The pairing is an artistic balancing act. When the shell ducks are overcome by spring fever, an entire horde of males discernible by their red frontal tubercles above their beaks, pester a single female. The courtship consists of wild pursuits, attacks, sham fights, and even aerial combat. 
until a couple finally emerges. It's astonishing just how colourful both sexes are. The reason? It's unnecessary for the females to disguise themselves, because shell ducks lay their eggs protected in burrows, for example, in old rabbit holes. The store belt, a sound. Most of the fresh water flows through here from the North Sea to the Baltic Sea. This is extremely important. A suspension bridge of some 18 kilometers in length connects the island of Foon in Denmark's west with Sjeland in the east. Around 11,000 porpoises live between Kattegat and the Bay of Kiel. The world's smallest whales rarely achieve sizes in excess of one and a half meters. From a distance and at first sight, they look like miniature dolphins. But they are more timid and difficult to observe as they don't perform capers. Marine animals that require higher levels of salt live in this part of the Baltic Sea. In the depths, heavy, salty water flows out of the Kattegat southwards. This carries oxygen and is vital for the Baltic Sea to take a breath. And for a rich marine fauna, food for the porpoises that eat six to eight kilograms daily, roughly a tenth of their body weight. The mini whales are sensitive to noise. Noise from ships damages their hearing and banishes them from many regions. Unfortunately, noise from offshore wind turbines has the same effect. The Öresund Bridge connects Malmö in Sweden with Denmark's capital, Copenhagen. With Rosenberg Castle in the King's Garden, and Nuhaun Canal with its gabled houses. From here, the island of Mern lies to the south with its six kilometer long steep walls of chalk. In places, the limestone wall is 128 meters tall, making it higher than the chalk formations on Rügen or even the cliffs of Dover. They host a very special attraction, the fastest bird in the world. Ever since the 70s, peregrine falcons no longer breed in Denmark. Then in 2002 on Mön, a male falcon from Sweden met with a female falcon from Germany. Since then, they rear up to four young birds annually on the chalk cliffs. By nosediving at speeds of up to 300 kilometers an hour, they capture exhausted birds resting on the island coast. Once again, the female brings the prey to her young in the nesting place. A nibble here and there should be all right. But then the mother just flies off again with the food. 
an educational measure for the almost fully grown young birds. They're big enough to leave the nest and become independent. In the meantime, peregrine falcons are also breeding again on the Danish islands of Bornholm and Sjælland. Just south of the Storebelt is the Bay of Kiel and the Feyman Sund. In the hinterland, old farms and fields characterize the landscape. It's not only sailing boats that frolic in the far-reaching estuaries, better known as fjords. It was back in February 2016 when Stefan Thomsen, a professional diver with the Flensburg Fire Brigade, had a very special encounter. Two large dolphins approach him. Normally, the up to four meter long mammals live in the North Sea and the Atlantic. But in the following weeks, the dolphins regularly meet with Thompson and his colleagues and encircle the men in a curious yet friendly manner. In the media, the two dolphins are given the names Selfie and Delphi. They are two young, not completely grown up males, apparently on an expedition in the Flensburg Fjord. Selfie and Delphi have been living in the Baltic Sea now for several months. They've also been sighted off the Swedish coast. There is more than enough fish for the dolphins to eat in the Baltic Sea, like herrings and cod. Thompson has even been able to see how Selfie and Delphi whirl up silt to hunt for food undercover. Typical of dolphins, they love to accompany boats. Selfie and Delphi attract the inquisitive to the fjord, who are rewarded with unforgettable moments. It's unclear why dolphins have never made the Baltic Sea a long-term habitat. There is enough for them to eat, and as these two have proven, they can also survive the winter here. After four weeks off the coast of Schleswig-Holstein, the now famous couple swim toward Denmark. They are probably following shoals of fish, leaving the Baltic Sea behind them again. South of the fjord lies Dassau Bay and the Trave, which flows through Lübeck. The former center of the Hanseatic League is known as the gateway to the north, from whence merchant cogs sailed to Scandinavia and the Baltic region. Eastward, along the Mecklenburg coast, break off edges on the shores of the Baltic Sea. Narrow strips of sand isthmuses and peninsulas, and behind them, lagoons, like the Salzhaf near Rerik. The long sandy beaches have made a popular holiday resort of the former fishing village of Warnemünde, with a ferry harbour and a beach promenade. A little further on the Das Peninsula, 
Waves spill into the forest and flush out the roots of trees until they fall, like here on the west beach of the peninsula. The Western Pomerania Lagoon Area National Park also comprises the lagoons in the east. Each autumn, the lagoons attract tens of thousands of cranes from Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. Before their flight to Spain, they top up their fat depots for the long journey ahead. To prevent cranes from ravaging already cultivated fields, however, the farmers distribute maize and wheat on harvested areas as a distraction. In contrast to storks, crane families make the trip southwards together. The young birds can be recognized by their brown heads. They search for food during the day. Before it gets dark, the large birds leave for their sleeping quarters. Their thousand-fold trumpeting can be heard for miles around. They gather by the shallow waters of the lagoon. At the easternmost area of the peninsula is one of the most important resting places for cranes in Central Europe. Sometimes up to 40,000 birds meet here at one time, protected by the national park. The cranes spend the night on grassy islands or by standing in knee-high waters. This protects them from attacks by foxes and the like while they're asleep. Not only cranes make their way to the Baltic Sea in the autumn, Deer are also keen on a trip to the beach. Red deer, like these tagged ones, wander over 40 kilometers, from the islands of Rügen and Hiddensee to the westernmost point of the Das. The animals regularly switch back and forth between island and mainland. Their aim? the stag rut. Not in the forest, but in the reeds. Whilst wandering, they traverse offshore reed islands, crossing the Baltic Sea in doing so. The relatively shallow waters are no barrier for red deer. The coast is undergoing constant change. Currents, waves and winds cause it to continuously reshape. The mainland turns into exposed mudflats, sometimes more, sometimes less covered in water, but always shallow. And so finally, the red deer managed to meet at their traditional rutting ground in the dunes to the west of the peninsula. Hunting has been forbidden here since the founding of the National Park in 1990, and this has changed the behavior of the deer. No sign of a timid king of the forest. The bellows of the deer echo around the reeds the entire day, a sound designed to impress the females and scare off any competition. 
sometimes a threat is sufficient and one surrenders. But there are times when the stag is challenged and the situation leads to a duel just behind the dunes. attentively eyed by the hinds. Originally, the red deer preferred the open range as a habitat. Hunting, road construction, and the absence of rest zones all forced the deer into the forest. On the dars in the autumn, one can observe them going about their business in their own natural way. The next morning, cranes too have early risers and sleepy heads. An hour passes by until the very last of them has flown off. Most of the animal visitors leave the national park by the beginning of November at the latest. Some wander back across the sea from whence they came. Others fly southwards for thousands of miles. Peace returns to the Das. In October 2015, a rare wanderer arrived in Mecklenburg Bay. A Sowerby's beaked whale, belonging to the least investigated of its kind. They normally live in the North Atlantic, sometimes in the North Sea. This three and a half meter long female has simply got lost. The whale keeps jumping out of the water, which is unusual. In contrast to dolphins, when beaked whales jump out of water, it is a sign of stress. Normally, in the open sea, they dive up to 1,000 meters deep to hunt for squids. The beaked whale never did find her way out of the shallow Baltic Sea. Weeks later, the female is found stranded in Sweden. Sadly, she simply died of starvation. Ordinarily, winters in the German Baltic Sea region are mild. But every 10 years, frost and snow have an icy cold grip on the land. Then the red deer find little food in the Das forest. They do have a dense winter coat, the fur being about double as long as it is in summer, with thick woolly hair underneath. But they still have to save energy. In times of hardship, Deer can lower the body temperature of their limbs and reduce their pulse. Meanwhile, all exertion is on the back burner, the fat reserves conserved, 
and it's time to retreat to the peaceful woods of the National Park. On the border to which, almost unchanged, are the old fishing villages of Bourne and Vic. The limestone cliffs on Rügen belong to the Yasmund National Park, the second one on the German sector of the Baltic Sea. Beach forests, where the black woodpecker builds his sleep caves, evolve on the chalky ground of which the cliffs are made. The primeval forests offer Europe's biggest woodpecker several opportunities. Spring causes the leaves to sprout, hundreds of thousands on old beech trees. Ever since Yasmund has been a national park, its beech forests are on the right road to becoming real jungles. The way in which they covered large parts of Europe for centuries. Since 2011, Yasmund, with the largest contiguous beech forest area on the Baltic coast, has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The old forests with their large spaces between the trees are ideal for the black woodpecker with a wingspan of an imposing 70 centimetres. The typical call of the male and his completely red crest distinguish him from the female with a smaller red bonnet. The young in the cave have already heard the father coming. As baby food, he has brought them ants, wood-dwelling beetles and their larvae, which he finds in the uncultivated forests, where dead trees simply remain lying and decay. In the protected national park, the red deer, like on the das, are active during the day. At the end of the winter, the males have discarded their antlers. Now a new set is growing, covered with velvet skin. In the spring, they drift through the forest as if emulating a boy band. They won't become rivals again until the autumn. Some prefer the underground level of the forest. Badgers. The subterranean constructions can reach depths of up to five meters. Large families live in them, often several generations side by side. Badgers are normally timid and nocturnal. But in many areas of Yasmund, it is so quiet that they even come out with their offspring. A female badger can give birth to up to six cubs in one litter. The bigger ones are allowed to rummage through the forest for food with their parents. Badgers have extremely good noses. Although they are martens and are therefore also predators, apart from insects, worms and small mammals, they also eat roots, blossoms and fruit. 
but if they feel disturbed, they quickly disappear from the face of the Earth. Not far from Königstuhl in Jasmund, just off Rügen, we find the conservation island of Finn. Further east, the imperial resorts on Usedom, with the pier at Arlbeck, attract tourists. Just a few kilometers further, and Poland begins, with its secluded and pristine sandy beaches. with coastlines full of bays and lagoons, which provide primordial returnees a home. In the 14th century, bison were wiped out in Western Pomerania, but in the 1980s, the wild cattle were once again settled just west of Stettin. Today, more than 80 bison roam here freely. The 11,000 hectare large National Park Volin, between the Baltic Sea and the River Oder Delta, has dedicated itself for decades to the protection of the wild cattle. Hope is indeed in sight for the kings of the forest. The sandy beaches and dunes that stretch from Poland to Lithuania seem endless. The most well-known dune can be found on the Koronian Spit, an almost 100 kilometer long barrier of the finest sand between the Koronian Lagoon and the sea. The continual winds have piled up shifting sand dunes more than 70 meters high. This area was covered with forests until the early 17th century. After deforestation, nothing could stop the shifting sand. Sometimes a dune could wander 10 meters in the space of three to four days. Those that could dismantled their wooden dwellings and rebuilt them elsewhere. But the sand still buried 14 villages beneath it. The village of Nida disappeared twice in the sand masses. Two hundred years ago, it was decided to reforest the dunes and hoard the advance of the sand. To this day, crosses in the sand betray the areas beneath which complete villages lie entombed. In the third carnation of the village of Nida, wooden triangular flags known as Kurvimpu have been turning in the wind since 1730. Once they were attached to the masts of the fishermen's boats. Today, the forest protects the village and harbor from the tall dunes, once again encircled by white-tailed eagles. Hunters and pollutants once caused them to disappear entirely from the region. The Koronian spit is full of fish. The steep slopes of the dunes make a perfect lookout for the hunt, or to check whether someone else was successful. When white-tailed eagles and common ravens act like the best of friends, then there's a reason for it. A 
A young eagle, resplendent in his nursery plumage, has found a dead fish on the beach. This attracts the hungry. Other young eagles. They may still be inexperienced in catching fish, but they know the art of dispute. The fight ends without any serious consequences. Thanks to strict protection rules, Lithuania's skies have 65 white-tailed eagles, many of them over the Coronian spit. Further eastwards, on the unspoiled coasts of Latvia, bronze-hued rivers flow into the sea, tinged from the peat in the moors of the hinterland. The Gauja is the wildest and longest river in Latvia. It winds its way more than 450 kilometers deep into the forests of the country. The harbingers of the north live here. Moose appreciate cold winters and cool summers. This moose cow already has a calf, but her flanks still show traces of a winter coat. The calf is one of around 8,000 of the country's moose population. The west of Latvia is also known as Kurland. The numerous rivers from the German coast to here have sweetened the Baltic Sea. The water now contains less than 1% salt. The deserted beaches lead to Cape Kolka, Kurland's northernmost point. Here, the Baltic Sea and the Bay of Riga meet. Despite all of the lighthouses, ships in the bay have often run aground on the sandbanks. They are a magnet for grey seals. Apparently, a hundred years ago, hundreds of thousands of these sea mammals lived here. At the end of the 1990s, there were just 1,500 of them left. When hauling fish, grey seals can dive 140 meters for up to 20 minutes and even catch notoriously fast salmon in the process. Each one of the more than two meter long and up to 300 kilogram heavy seals eats around 10 kilograms of fish per day. Fishermen therefore almost wipe them out as unwelcome competitors. The wreck in the Bay of Riga could be seen as a kind of compensation. The seal's popular meeting place is a sunken fish trawler. In the end, the fishermen have supplied their old rivals with a place in the sun. Since the seals are no longer hunted, they have propagated well. Now, more than 30,000 grey seals populate the coasts of the Baltic Sea, the world's youngest ocean. <laughs>